The seasons come and the seasons go. The grass greens and then it withers. The flowers bloom and then they fade. But the word of our God lasts forever. And I'm glad that you're here today to celebrate one of those seasonal changes. Welcome, friends. Welcome this morning to our fall kickoff 2023. Got some great ministries that are going to start after today. We'll talk about them a little bit later. But for today, we're going to start our new sermon series on our spiritual bucket list. This is the items that you wanted to have on your bucket list, the things you want to do in your life before you pass away. I got all this survey info from you, so this is the content you gave me. I'm excited to share it. And also, welcome to our friends online. I did not greet you yet. We are glad to have you all as well. So today, we're going to be talking about prayer. And to get us thinking about that, I have this story. It is about a woman who invited her large extended family over for dinner. Over a dozen people crammed themselves in the family dining room. Before everyone ate, the father turned to his six-year-old daughter and said, Susie, would you like to say the blessing? The girl replied, I wouldn't know what to say, Daddy. Well, just repeat what you heard when Mommy prays, Dad answered. The daughter nodded, bowed her head, and immediately bellowed out, Lord God Almighty, why did I invite so many people to dinner? <laughs> it's sometimes hard to know what to say when we pray, or difficult to know if somebody's listening or what's happening due to our prayer. But God is always there. God is always listening to our prayers, and we'll experience more of that later on. For now, let's open ourselves to the movement of the Spirit and the gathering in this place. Welcome, friends. Please join me in a call to worship. Please stand. Come joyfully before the Lord. God knows us and loves us. Come prayerfully before the Lord. God sees our concerns, our fears, our sins. Come hopefully before the Lord. Christ proclaimed God's love and forgiveness for all God's people. Know throughout all of your being that God absolutely loves you. How precious and powerful that knowledge is. Thanks be to God. So our first hymn this morning, friends, is number 496 in the hymnal. It's Sweet Hour of Prayer. Let's remain standing.
Lord of peace and hope, we open our hearts to you this day. Be with us as we hear your words of inspiration and healing. Restore us as we seek your grace. Make forgiveness flow like water on our dry souls as we call out to you, saying together, we keep silent before you, Lord, because we often don't know what to say. In our heart of hearts, we are afraid to confront our brokenness. Help us, we ask, as we reach out to you today. May we understand that prayer doesn't need to have the right worlds. We don't need long explanations. All he requires an open heart and a welcoming invitation. Join us now in the sanctuary of our souls where distress cannot reach us. In your steadfast love, forgive us. In your healing caress, cleanse us. In your Holy Spirit, restore us. In the name of our Savior, we pray. Amen. The Lord hears the prayers of a faithful heart. God has become our hiding place and refuge from trouble. No harm can touch us here. The Lord wraps us in salvation. We are forgiven. We receive grace and forgiveness from God's amazing love revealed to us in Christ Jesus. Amen. So we come now to that time where we're able to share some of the joys and concerns that have emerged in our lives over the last week. So while the traveling mic gets ready to go around, I've got a couple to share. First is from Wendy Yates, uh, regrettably one of their longtime family friends. 30-year friend named Trevor has passed away. So for prayers for Trevor's family and the Yates family as they deal with that immense loss. And also, I just want to bring up a big joy. We had a wonderful Joy Fellowship meal downstairs on Wednesday. We had about 21, 22 people listening to Anthony from the Recycling Center talk about where things go when you put them in that giant blue trash can. Here's a hint. They just simply don't disappear. They go through a long journey to many different places. It was actually quite interesting. From that, we got a little bit of a flyer. If you've ever wondered what you can and can't recycle, we have that flyer in back. It's on the table, so that way you know what goes in that trash can. So feel free to grab one of those later. Uh, I'd like to lift up our oldest son, Sean. He's having surgery on Monday, so please keep him in your prayers. So prayers for an upcoming surgery. And Folks online, as always, you are welcome to start putting your prayer concerns in the chat box or to text me what you would like to say, and I will share it with the folks here on site. This is Judy Denicus. Um, I have uh, actually a couple uh, joy um, prayers, I guess. Um, our daughter, youngest daughter, Kristen, is flying in this evening and will be here till Thursday to visit, and Dale had his first chemo this week, and he's doing well so far. Thanks for all the prayers and the cards and the thoughts. Really appreciate it. Many people praying for you all, and that's only going to increase, I imagine. Pastor Kathy. Pastor Kathy, and prayers for the people of Madagascar and um, their, the destruction in their country from that earthquake for the more than 2,000 lives lost, the over 1,000 lives in um, serious medical, medical condition. And God, we reach, would reach out. We and so many people around the world reach out in, in prayer and in substance with our gifts. So, um, yeah, a difficult time for them and a time of reflection for us on our blessings. So just a quick, was, was it Madagascar? I saw one that happened in Morocco. Sorry, Morocco. Okay. It's a big earthquake no matter where it hit, and we are certainly praying for the people affected. So thank you for bringing that up. One in California. Yeah, it's... Um, Rich Wolfley, um, prayers for our next door neighbor's daughter that we had back in Iowa. That was Scott and Shelby's uh, babysitter growing up. 
passed away unexpectedly last weekend and uh, from heart failure, like prayers for Rod and his family, uh, her partner for over 30 years. And um, Jackie Weary is her name, or was her maiden name, or is her name. So like prayers for the Weary family and for Rod and his side of the family. So prayers for Jackie, another longtime family friend who has regrettably passed away. Grayson. Um, I just want to um, lift up right now, all of the teachers that I talk to right now are saying like, this is the wildest year yet. <laughs> so I don't know exactly, I, I honestly think that like now that we've kind of recovered from pandemic, like it just, we're seeing a lot of effects of it from on kids and what it did. So just prayers for teachers. Um, it's a rough year for a lot of people that I know. Okay, Mike? This is Mike. I, my son, my youngest one, I guess, got married on Thursday, which was really nice. So prayers for a son who got married. I did not hear the date, though. Last, last Thursday. 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 And speaking of marriage, Mike and Renee are celebrating 12 years of marriage today. So happy anniversary to you two. Since you brought up marriage and wedding, I just had to say it. All right, friends, let's take all we are and all that we've brought here, and let's go to that silent sanctuary of our soul to meet the Lord God there. If you'd pray with me. Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Guiding Spirit. Lord, we know you by many names, and we call out to you in many ways. We are blessed to know that however we pray, whenever we're able to connect with you, we know that your ear is listening. So we pray, hear all the joys and concerns, the worries of our hearts, the joys of our souls. Whatever we brought here and meet you with in the silent sanctuary of our soul, <coughs> may you meet us there. Many people are hurting, Lord. Many here have lost longtime friends and know that people are suffering in grief. There are people around the world suffering from earthquakes and other tragedies. There are people here that have wounds we don't see. Yet you see them, O oh God. And through prayer, we trust that you are bringing the best possible result forward. We trust that Christ is always alongside us. So God, help us to see where that path you are dreaming is leading. Help us to walk it with strength and perseverance. And may the joys we feel, may the knowledge of life that is around us increasingly encourage us to go further. And may we know that the Spirit surrounds us always and that peace is our guide. We thank you for all these things, God, and we thank you for your ways of bringing them to us, especially Jesus the Christ, your Son, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We get to do something fun now, something this church hasn't done in four or five years. It's something I haven't done in at least four years. So we're going to sing the first verse of Jesus Loved Me. And as we are singing, I would invite the kiddos to come up for the children's sermon. Jesus loves me, this I
good to have Eva and Cora up here. We got some kiddos downstairs in the nursery. So how are you guys doing today? Good. I'm glad to hear that. So I have a question for you. Have you ever been in class and the teacher calls on you and you just don't know what to say? Do you freeze up? No, no, you definitely never know what to say. <laughs> you always know what to say. Yes, you do. But sometimes you don't know what to say. You'll, somebody will ask you a question or you'll be in the middle of a sentence and you just don't know. Sometimes praying is like that because in prayer we're talking to God and sometimes we just don't know what to say. So today I'm going to teach you a cool prayer form. So if you ever not, don't know what to say, this will help. So here's what I want us to do. This is called the five finger prayer. Okay? All right. I want you to put your hands in front of you like this. You all can join in. So keep your eyes open so you can see your hands. Sometimes we don't do that. But notice how the finger closest to us is the thumb. See? Thumb. What this reminds you is that you're supposed to pray about the people closest to you. So if you don't know the words to pray, pray for your parents, your brothers and sisters, your family. That thumb reminds us of that, to pray for the people who are close to you. All right, next finger. What's this one called? Do you know what this finger is called? Pointer finger, index finger, exactly. It is used for pointing. And so you can remember to pray to be pointed in the right direction. <laughs> you can pray to be guided where God wants you to go. You can pray for the pe people who are trying to point you in directions, your Sunday school teachers, your um, friends. Next, the middle finger. That reminds us to pray for the people who are tall and in power and who are doing a lot of hard things. We remember them and we pray for them. Then this finger, the fourth finger, do you know what this one's called? Ring finger. This is actually the weakest of all the fingers, according to some scientific stuff I read. So it is weak, and it reminds you to pray for those who are weak. So those who are sick, those who are needy, those who need a lot of help. Our ring fingers remind us to do that. And then lastly, we got the pinky. The Bible says, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. So let this little finger remind you to pray for yourself. So the next time you need help praying, remember, five fingers will help you figure that out. Pray for those closest to you. Pray for those who point the way. Pray for those who are tall and have a lot to do. Pray for those who are weak and need help. And pray for yourself. If we do that, God is going to hear that, and you're going to do amazing things. So let's pray now. Would you join me in that? Dear God, we thank you for prayer. We love that you are our friend to talk to. But even though sometimes friends don't know what to say, we know that you will help us talk what's upon our hearts and bring up what we need. Thank you, God, that you are always with us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you all can head to Sunday school.
for the reading of today's scripture, we now pray. Gracious God, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today's passages are from Psalm 39, verse 20, 12. Hear my prayer, O oh Lord. Listen to my cries for help. Don't ignore my tears, for I am your guest, a traveler passing through as my ancestors were before me. And from 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 to 18. Always be joyful, never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. No prayer concerns from the eight or so households that are joining us, although the Huffs and Blackhawks send their greetings. So how many of you all out there have a bucket list? What is that list of things that you hope to accomplish before you kick the bucket, a.k.a. pass away? I've actually had a list for many years. I keep it on my phone. I dream of writing a book someday. About what? I don't know. I'm hoping inspiration will strike. Otherwise, I'd like to do a lot of traveling. At the top of my list is getting out to England. Oh, I would love, love, love to make it to Britain and take the John Wesley tour and attend a Premier League soccer match. Britain's not my only destination either. I collect Lego sets, so one day I hope to see the Lego headquarters in Denmark. I'm fascinated by church history, so I also hope to make it to Jerusalem someday. I was actually looking at my list last week, and I realized I'd placed my Lego headquarters trip above my pilgrimage to Jerusalem. I guess that shows you where I think the true Holy Land is. <laughs> Written or not, many of us have similar bucket lists. We have things we want to do. But I have to wonder, out of all the trips, accomplishments, and improvements we desire, how many of them involve God? What items are we dedicating purely to faith? Hmm. Those contributions are a bit lacking, I would think. It's not that we don't believe faith is important. I think many of us, it just doesn't occur to us to have a spiritual bucket list. So that's what we're going to be creating in this sermon series. We're going to be compiling over the next few weeks a spiritual bucket list based off all the input that you all provided in our recent worship survey. I decided to go with prayer for this first entry because of the 20 or so responses I got, five of them, around 25%, brought up ideas concerning prayer. It is certainly a great place to begin. Prayer is one of, if not the most central practice in all of Christianity. The Apostle Paul said it that way, this way in 1 Thessalonians. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for all of you who belong to Christ Jesus. He describes this wonderful, immersive reality right there. That's prayer for him. Yet somehow, I think there's a disconnect between that and how many modern people experience their prayers. One member who came to see me put it this way, and I'm paraphrasing what she said. She told me, I don't know if I'm praying correctly, Pastor. I reach out to God, and I'm not sure God's reaching back. That sound familiar? 
So since so many people asked about prayers, I kind of consolidated all their responses into this topic for today. We're going to talk about our bucket list desire to have a better prayer life. I'm going to try to speak more in depth about prayer in the future because there's far more than what we're going to get to today. But for now, I want to give you some small adjustments that will help you work on your bucket list. To determine what these elements are for you, because prayer is always individualistic and unique. Let's check out what I got up on the screen here. What you see here is a list of barriers that people commonly pray, face when they pray. Excuse me. See if any of these hit close to home. When praying, people often report, I get distracted. I get bored. I get tired. I don't have time. I don't get the answer I want. I don't get an answer at all. I'm not sure God cares about my prayers. I'm not sure prayer changes anything. There are countless other difficulties out there, but these are the items I saw mentioned repeatedly in my research. Locate yourself up there, if you would. Which one of these issues do you most deal with? Or if yours isn't listed, what hardship do you experience when you pray? Or if you don't have any problems, come visit me afterwards, because I would love to know how you check this item off your bucket list. Once you've determined your spot in this spectrum, ask yourself, what adjustment can I make for this prayer problem? What small solution applies to the issue I have when I talk to God? Whatever you're thinking of, that's the small adjustment that will help you work towards your bucket list. This small fix will move you towards a better prayer life. If you aren't sure where to begin, I do have some suggestions for you. We'll start at the top of the screen. If you're somebody who gets easily distracted when you pray, when you pray you say something like, thank you, Lord, for my daily bread, which gets you thinking, ooh, I need bread from the store. And before you know it, you're writing out your grocery list. I'm hearing laughter, so it's affecting somebody out there. If this is you, my advice is to determine what is drawing you out of your prayerful mind and address that. If you're in an environment that's noisy and distracting, try to find someplace quiet. If you have those outside thoughts that intrude, Keep a piece of paper nearby and write down those items for later. Then jump back into your prayer once you've done that. Adding structure can help. There are many, many, many different prayer forms out there that help, can help you keep focused and flowing. You could even start with the five-finger prayer form that I taught the kiddos a little while ago. Moving on. For those who get bored... I'm curious, what are you saying to God when you pray? Are you repeating the same words you always do? Bless me, O oh God, for I have sinned. Forgive my trespasses. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. These are timeless, beautiful words to be sure of. But have you said them so often that they're starting to lose their meaning? If boilerplate prayers are what is making you bored, why not change your vocabulary for a little bit? Start sharing what's truly on your heart without the formal wording. There's no set list of phrases you need to say when you pray, friends. There's no position that you officially need to use. You can connect with God wherever and however you need to. You can talk in plain English 
if that's what helps you stay engaged. And for those who are tired when you pray, that is me right there. Well, when is a time when you are fully awake? When are do you at work, stand up, take five and stretch? Or have another break during the day? Might you utilize one of those times for the Spirit? You could have a small devotional moment with your coffee at work or set your alarm 20 minutes earlier to have some time before the kids get up. Whatever issue you might have, keep asking these questions. Keep evaluating and applying the little fixes as you go. Because this feedback loop is going to help you work towards this bucket list item. Yet at the same time, I have to tell you that simple fixes won't solve everything. Many of these prayer struggles, especially the two on the bottom right, are serious. If you're experiencing one of them today, if you haven't heard from God about a prayer you raised or you're getting wonky answers you're not expecting, know you're in good company. There's nothing wrong with you. Psalm 39 introduces us to somebody who's in similar circumstances. I had Patty read a small snippet of it earlier, and the psalmist in it sounds very pious, in a good place. Hear my prayer, O God, he says. I am your guest as my ancestors were before me. You think this is a part of a passage that's lauding God, that's lifting up all of God's divine attributes. Until the next verse, Psalm 39, 13, where the author cries out this, leave me alone, God, so I can smile again. Turns out the psalmist is feeling pretty beaten up. He's prayed for design, divine assistance, and he hasn't seen that happening. The opposite's occurring in his opinion. In verse 10, the author writes, God, please stop striking me. I am exhausted by the blows from your hand. Before this, in verse 9, he wails, I am silent before you, God. I won't say a word, for I feel my punishment is from you. The psalmist is experiencing so much angst in this passage. He has prayed for better things, and he isn't getting what he wants. He's starting to think he's being punished. Anyone out there resonate with that? You don't get what you prayed for, and the response you do receive feels completely off? Does it mean God doesn't care? Or prayer doesn't work? This is where it gets murky, friends. There are no minor adjustments for these issues. And the answers we do get when we explore are off-putting. It's uncomfortable for me to say, but I think many times people don't get what they pray for because it's not what they should receive. It's not what's best for them. God is bigger than us. God knows the best possible outcome in all things. And because of that, because God loves us so, the Spirit will sometimes accompany us down paths that we don't prefer. But they're the best for us. Here's an example for you. One of my good buddies got divorced a while ago. It was definitely not his choice. He'd grown apart from his wife, but he still loved her very much. He prayed fervently for a reconciliation. Didn't happen. The marriage dissolved, and for a long time after, my friend felt that God had been MIA, MIA the entire time. Until he met the woman who is his current wife. They've been together for a long time now, and 
In reflecting on it one time, my friend told me, I can't tell you how much better things are now. My life is so good. God obviously saw something I didn't. God does have a better vantage point than we do, friends. God can factor in fate and free will into the paths the Spirit is dreaming. And sometimes that means we won't get what we pray for. Other times, we might end up in a place we didn't expect. Sometimes free will just hijacks everything and you're thrown into chaos. So when you pray about the things in those situations and they don't approve, when that new and better relationship doesn't emerge, or when another bad health diagnosis does drop, or when your kid keeps getting in trouble at school, when all those things happen, all those things we prayed for don't change and get better, all too often people move to the last point we have up on the list. We start believing that prayer doesn't affect anything. I am so sorry if you are at that point today. And I wish I could tell you why things are the way they are. We may not be able to decipher all that God is doing, but I can tell you this. Prayer does change things, my friends. God does care for you deeply. God is not punishing you like the psalmist might believe. We need to remember, prayer is not like turning on a light switch. It's not cause and effect. Prayer functions differently. It is, by definition, a conversation. And conversations serve to promote what? Relationships. And relationships are rarely about immediate results. Most of the people we know and love, we only get to that status after years of support and struggle. And, and we know this. In a good relationship, it's just as much about the other person as it is about you. We value their contribution just as much as what we give. This is true in prayer. God knows what we are bringing to that time with God. The Spirit is continually working to bring the best possible result out of the health issues, financial problems, job woes, marriage snags, kid quandaries, and whatnot. God is doing that, and God takes that into account in our prayers. God gets our perspective. And if we prayerfully respond and open ourselves to what God is bringing in that moment, you ask for the wisdom to see your circumstances for what they are, and the strength to act like Jesus Christ would act? Do that. And that's when prayer starts leading to huge benefits and differences. Many times this shift isn't instantly evident. God works from the inside out, remember. Once prayer has changed how you think, which you might remember is also the definition of the term repent. Once God has changed how you think and you alter how you act, you become better attuned to God's ways and paths. No matter what they end up being, you're able to flourish. And if you join in with other praying folk along the way, <laughs> that's how the world starts getting better. This flow is how prayer works. It's how it changes things. It's slow, but it's unstoppable when we live into it. And it explains so much of what Jesus does when he prays. When he prays, he offers himself completely to God, and God offers God's self completely to Christ. And that's what happens in this meal of communion. So this is very much a prayerful act. 
we remember how Jesus Christ is giving all he has for this moment. He brings everything to bear. And if we accept that, if we welcome that in, that prayer starts changing lives. So as we come forward today, may that be our prayer, that God would change us around the table today. And may we remember how Jesus Christ brought this meal to us. How on a night so long ago, Jesus was feasting with his friends. And after the supper was over, he took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his friends and said, take and eat. This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then when the supper was over, he took the glass of wine, the goblet of wine. And again, he blessed it, and he gave it to his friends and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So in remembrance of these, God's mighty acts through Jesus Christ, we ask that the Spirit be here and be visible in this place, and that you, O Holy Spirit, would bless these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, broken that we would be whole, sacrificed that we would know plenty, given to one to be given to all. Lord, thank you for this holy time and these holy people. May we meet you now at this sacred table. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So here in the United Methodist tradition, we have no barriers between you and the communion table. All you need to do is accept that invitation that's popping up in your heart, hopefully, saying, your soul is hungry, go forth and eat. Folks online, that's the same for you. If you would like communion, even if you are far, far away from us, I promise this to our national audience, and I want to take them up on this someday. If you want communion brought to you, I will call the nearest Methodist church and have it brought to your door. Maybe one day I'll take a road trip. We'll figure this out. But yes, no barriers here to the table, friends. In a moment, we'll come straight up the aisle here. And as you do, you'll stop by the bread where Kate will hand you a little piece of bread. If you would, please hold out your hands like you're receiving a gift, because the bread symbolizes God's grace, and we do receive that as a gift. Then I will give you a little cup of grape juice. Once that happens, I encourage you to find that place where you best meet with God, where you can accept all that God's bringing you today. For most, fo many folks, it's here at the. Excuse me, it's here at the kneelers in prayer. For others, it's back in the pews, holding the hands of a loved one. Still more, find value in just silence. Wherever that prayerful moment best connects with you, God, with you people, do that and meet with your God. Finally, if you bring a tithe or offering today, you can put that in the plates as you come up. And if you can't make it to the table, just signal the ushers and we will bring the meal to you. So friends, the table of grace is open. Jesus Christ invites you to come forward. Please come as you feel led.
Let's end in a prayer after receiving. God, you've given yourself to us. Now send us out to give our lives to others. Your love has made us a new people. As a people of joy, we go out to spread grace. We thank you for your mighty sacrifice, O oh God, and all it is going to inspire us to do. And we pray that you would bless our efforts in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, I'll invite us to stand now as we sing our final hymn. It's What a Friend We Have in Jesus. It's 526 if you need the music. Amen. I'll invite us to have a seat because we are going to be talking about all the things we are kicking off this fall. There are so many ways, so many ways you can serve this church and this community going the months ahead. So first we'll show you what our volunteer needs are just in case you are interested. Moving on, uh, starting today we are sending out a communication survey. I know you just filled out the worship survey, and I appreciate that. Now we're trying to figure out how to best communicate with you because we're trying to do some refinements and improvements to the newsletter and the ways we reach out to you. It's on the website right now, so you can do it there. We'll have physical copies out here quick, probably next week, so look for it then. All right, so next, we are kicking off some fall activities today. The most notable one that concerns Bible studies or discipleship is what I'm calling our Friday Bible brunch. So starting all the Fridays in October around 10 or 10.30, I'm not quite sure yet, we're going to have a gathering here and we're going to talk about the Bible. The subject is how to read the Bible because you read different sections of the scripture differently. You read the Psalms different than you would the Gospels and 
the prophets different than you would Paul's letters. So we're going to talk about some of the ways that you can go into the Bible with a more, well, a more aware eye of what's going on. So that'll be fun. So that's the Bible, Bible Brunch on Fridays and Octobers. There's more info in the back on the flyers. I was going to announce the H4H Build Day, Habitat for Humanity Build Day, but that crew list is now full. We have a full crew that's going to be working on a Habitat Build in Loveland here in a month or so. So thank you to everybody who's signed up for that. Next, I told you, a lot going on. We are looking for people interested in a pickup choir. A Pickup choir is people who just are interested to gather and sing on a cup coming Sunday. If you are interested in that, talk to Debbie. We're looking to do maybe something in two to three weeks, a little easy piece. So if that's something you're interested in, head on up and check in with her. All right, continuing on, Union's Fall Fest and Coat Drive is the 30th of this month. If you are going to bring in a new or gently used coat for us, you can put it in the yellow house back in the back. Or if you bring in other winter items, which we are taking, those need to be new. So we need new long johns, new socks. We don't want to use ones of those. So bring those in and put them in the little um, house in back. And we're also putting out the call today for people who would be interested in participating in a pie contest. That's right, we're gonna have a pie contest associated with this. So we are gonna put that out there and we're gonna have a lot of fun and rumor has it, I... I this, is, this is not oh. a pro pie at your pastor contest. Oh, oh no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, no, okay, I get what you're saying. No, it's not a pie eating contest. It's a pie like contest contest. We're gonna, oh, judging by the number of people who are excited to throw pies at me, I'm worried now. <laughs> Maybe we could do that too. I don't know. Wow, say the word pie and everybody gets excited. I'm, but yes, there will be a pie contest. Baking will, contest. What? Baking contest. Baking contest. Yes, baking contest. So. Pie baking contest. So if you are interested, talk to Debbie or me. Oh, I'm, I'm scary now. I'm going to start watching for pie throwers. Okay, lastly, this is the last one. Um, I am not in town for most of this week. I'm headed out to Pennsylvania for continuing education. If you need pastoral help during this time, we do have somebody covering. So just call Tony in the office. He can get you connected with Pastor Lee over at First Church. All right, friends, that is all we have going, and it is a lot. Let's head out into the world to do it, and I'll invite you to stand for the benediction. May the power of God's love always be in our hearts and reflected in our lives. May we know, go knowing that God is a breath away through a prayer. And may we thrive understanding that God is always listening and God is always in action around us. Go now in peace and may God's grace be with you and bless you always. Amen. Send for